Well, good afternoon, everybody, uh, and welcome to uh, the United Regional Chamber of Commerce's uh, weekly update. Uh, thank you for taking the time to come and join us today. Um, in this crazy and, and unprecedented time, uh, we're finding that um, most folks are working either from home or working remotely, and uh, that has its different challenges. And one of it, one of their challenges, is a physical challenge. So today, uh, our guest is uh, Jean-Paul Sayer. He's a doctor of physical therapy and the director of rehabilitation for Elite Physical Therapy, right there in Attleboro. Uh, JP, welcome. Hi, Jack. Thanks for having me. I appreciate you coming on today. Um, you know, just like to uh, give some folks at home uh, who are watching some tips, some ideas of, um, you know, a little bit more about physical therapy and uh, what they can do while they're sitting at home. So I got a couple of quick questions for you. And uh, obviously you can uh, fill in the blanks as you go. Um, let me ask you first, who is, who is appropriate to uh, have to go to physical therapy? Hi, you know, everybody is really appropriate for physical therapy. It goes so broad beyond what a lot of people think it is. I know in our clinic, we've seen children as young as only a few months old, and we've even had people up to the age in their 90s and even a few clients and patients who have been over 100. So really, it's going to be anybody who wants to move better, anybody who wants to become more functional or optimize what they're doing on a daily basis. And what are some of the signs or, or, or what are the indications that somebody needs to seek out physical therapy? Well, a lot of people we know might pick up a little bit of an injury, have something that's been bothering them for a little while, and they wait on it. They hope it's going to go away. But usually if somebody has any sort of pain or restriction in their daily activity that they feel like is holding them back from doing the things they do on a daily basis, they should probably see a physical therapist. So whether that's somebody who simply says getting a gallon of milk out of my cupboard or out of the fridge is difficult or somebody who's actually having trouble with balance or sports, they would definitely benefit from the professional advice from a physical therapist. And I'm sure, of course, you know, after surgery, uh, many different types of surgery, you know, they need to come and visit you uh, and, and learn a regiment of programs uh, to get them back into physical health. Is that right? Absolutely. A lot of times for an orthopedic surgery, the doctor will immediately tell you when to get started with physical therapy and oftentimes will send the referral directly to the physical therapist to say, this person needs to get moving again. But even after surgeries that you wouldn't expect, some people are just a little bit deconditioned, a little bit showing a little bit of weakness and they need to get back to their best, whether that's balance or strength. So most post-operative uh, patients or people would benefit from getting some physical therapy. Tell me a little bit about uh, the facility that you have right there in Attleboro. Uh, we did a great ribbon cutting there a, a short time ago when you did an opening, but you have all of the equipment and all of the uh, things needed. Uh, tell us a little bit about your um, location. Oh, sure. Well, we're located right across from the Attleboro train station, which is really convenient for a lot of people at the Renaissance station. Our space is very open and very private if you need it to be. While we utilize a relatively open gym area, so people have enough space to move around safely and they don't have to worry about, you know, tripping over anything or any clutter, we have a lot of open space to really get all of the exercises that you might need, but we also have some private treatment rooms. Sometimes you have people who prefer to be treated or seen with a little bit of privacy for that more one-on-one -on -one personal connection or to not share the space with other people. And we have that opportunity too. So we have all the equipment you can need from the bikes and treadmills to weights if you need them to just basic elastic resistance bands and things to assist you for stretching or to help you with your balance. Now, are you able to see patients right now during this uh, kind of stay-at-home order? So as of right now, we are still able to see patients, but we're doing it under the guidance of telehealth. So telehealth has become kind of the new platform during these, uh, during these times to make sure everybody can still get the care they need and the professional advice that they need. Awesome. And can you give us some uh, tips or some ideas of what can people do at home right now, um, you know, to kind of keep them healthy, kind of uh, flexible, 
you know, we're all kind of stuck. A lot of people have cabin fever. You know, I'm lucky yeah. I get to work out of my office every day because we are an essential business. Um, but, you know, guys like me, we sit all day long. But give us some examples of some tips that uh, we could all use right now. Absolutely. If I had to pick one thing that I would really like to tell everybody is to be standing, to be walking as much as you can. While we want to maintain our social distance, I think going for just even a walk around the block, a walk around your yard can be a really, really valuable experience just to keep those legs moving. When you sit down for a long time, we've been seeing it over and over again, those hips getting tight, people's heads coming a little bit forward, developing some neck pain, maybe the shoulders getting forward. A couple of really easy things I think people could do that are really important are just going for a walk. And then another thing, just very simple, is checking your posture. Sitting up nice and tall and just giving those shoulder blades a little pinch back is just going to be a good way to keep the chest nice and open, prevent you from slouching a little too much or becoming internally rotated at the shoulders, which is all too common right now with people sitting at home. And um, tell us a little bit about telehealth and, and you know, what does a, a telehealth appointment look like right now? Yeah, a telehealth appointment is a really, really great way to get a face-to-face -face interaction with a physical therapist to get some professional advice. So it would be very similar to what you and I are doing right now. You'd be able to be admitted into the, the waiting room through the computer from your own home. So as long as you have some sort of webcam, whether that's uh, a cell phone, a laptop, a computer, the physical therapist is then able to sit down one-on-one -on -one and ask you questions so you can answer and then also show them some very, very basic things where I could ask you, let me see you raise your arm up overhead, or maybe I could take a look at how your neck is moving. So we would just be able to have this one-on-one -on -one conversation where I'm actually able to give you feedback on all the things you're doing and get a very good sense of what might be limiting you. Well, you know, it, I, I think that a lot of us are, are going to have to get uh, more and more used to these teleconferences, these Zoom calls, whatever it might be, you know, with the with the way things are going on in the world right now. Um, if somebody, you know, felt that they had an issue or, or a problem, what would be the best way um, for them to get a diagnosis? Uh, reach out to you, do one of these Zoom calls. Um, give us an idea of what would be the best way for them to move forward. The first thing and the best thing they should do is if it's something that's causing them pain, getting professional advice is definitely going to be the best first course of action. A lot of people like to think maybe it'll go away or they like to kind of look at the internet to see if maybe they can self-diagnose. But right now with the availability of telehealth, I think it's a great opportunity for people to get actual professional advice. So if they could look up, for example, our office, if they wanted to call into an elite physical therapy location, somebody could answer the phone and then get them scheduled with a therapist for telehealth. So for that, they would give them all the information they need, how we would reach out to them, how they can log into the platform for our telehealth service. And then from there, they have this face-to-face -face interaction where they can ask all of the questions that they have, show where their pain is, discuss how it was brought up with a therapist. And then the therapist can just simply ask them to go through a few motions and a few of the special tests to help get them to help give them a diagnosis. So just calling into your PT clinic or office and getting them set up with an appointment is going to be the best start. And how does the um, telehealth work right now, uh, say with your insurance companies, with co-pays and things like that? How does that work? Right now, we're actually in a really wonderful situation regarding co-pays in that many, many insurances throughout the area are actually not requiring co-pays. So while I can't guarantee this for every insurance, for many of them, they're not requiring any contribution from the patient at all. So it's really an excellent time to get that advice. You can do it from the comfort of your home, and then you would be able to do it without worrying about the financial burden that might be associated with it for right now. So people can call their insurance company or even our office could run their insurance for them and let them know if they would have any financial responsibility. That's going to be very important. Uh, and, and you're right. We are in a great time where the insurance companies are waiving some of those. Uh, we're just hoping that they do that, you know, to at least get us a little bit more comfortable with telehealth. Uh, you know, I know I have an appointment uh, in two weeks with my doctor. It's just, you know, my cholesterol stuff because I don't eat right and all that good. But uh, and I'll get the lecture that I'm fat and, and I need to, you know, lose weight and all that good <laughs> stuff. Uh, but uh, what are some of the other things that um, would lead people to reach out to you and ask you for your assistance? 
So some of the things that we see, obviously the most common would be somebody just flat out has pain. They're telling me that when they go from sitting to standing, they have pain, or when they try to lift overhead, they have pain. But we actually treat a lot of other conditions too that people might, might not realize, such as your general deconditioning. Somebody just says simply, I feel really weak and it's limiting my day-to-day -day function. We have people that come in and say, my balance just feels a little bit off. I don't quite feel as safe or as steady as I once did walking throughout my home. But we also see other issues, people with concussions or people who have nerve pain or people who are suffering from headaches that are coming from tension in their head and neck, uh, vestibular issues, meaning your balance or you have dizziness. So we actually treat a lot of conditions beyond your post-surgical or just the muscle aches and pains. So in other words, that snap, crackle, pop I hear in the morning is not my Rice Krispies anymore? <laughs> it's not the Rice Krispies cereal. It might be something else going on. <laughs> well, what would be the best way for them to uh, reach you? The best way for them to reach us would just be by calling our offices. Our office, you can find any information online for any of our offices. We have a lot of locations. And if they call into one of the offices, they'll be directed to the most appropriate location and then set up with a physical therapist who can help them. The physical therapist will probably reach out by email and that's a great way to communicate. Yeah, um, you know, you've been a member of my chamber for a long time since you've been in Attleboro. Um, I've had the pleasure of dealing with uh, a lot of the, the uh, folks that come to our meetings and, and come to our networking groups. Uh, we did have a great event there at your facility and hope to have another one uh, this year. Um, Chelsea is uh, the rep who comes in and sees us all the time. She's one of my ambassadors as well, which we really appreciate. Um, but tell me about a uh, little bit about the two owners. Uh, I had the chance to meet them, and uh, I know they've done a tremendous job in opening up different locations. Yeah. Well, one thing that's great that we have regarding our ownership is both of our owners are actually physical therapists. So they understand what people are looking for, what the physical therapists are going through, and what they need to give the best care possible. So both of them still treat, both of them still practice out of a Warwick, Rhode Island location. And they've been practicing for a long time, and they saw just a better way to deliver physical therapy, where you can deliver a good hands-on, one-on-one approach that's spent the entire time with a physical therapist. So they're two people that really have reached out to the communities and all of the local areas to find out what people are looking for and what people need and how they can get the best care possible. So you see them around, they love doing community events, sponsoring local events, and yep. they're, they're two great people to have promoting our profession. How many folks do you have at your location? Because I know there's quite a few of you there. So my location, since we've only been open since March, is actually one of our smaller locations. As of right now, we have three full-time physical therapists and then one front office staff member currently. Overall, as a company, we have, we have many therapists. I think we're up into about the 75 therapist range throughout Rhode Island and Massachusetts, but our clinic is sitting on three full-time physical therapists right now. Yeah, you know, I know some folks that have, have used your services, and, and one of the good things is there's many different locations that you can go to, whatever happens to be more convenient for your home or for your office, wherever you might be working out of that day. Um, is there anything else that, uh, you know, you can leave us with uh, to help people prepare um, for the long term here? If, if we're stuck in our homes or stuck in our offices, you know, for the next month or so, is there exercises or a little stretching that they can do while they're sitting at their desk, while they're sitting on the couch where a lot of us are ended up right now? <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the first thing that I would definitely have to recommend is, again, if something is actually causing you pain, get help for it right away. Right now is an easy time. It's very convenient with these telehealth appointments. So seek professional advice immediately if something is truly painful. If you're looking to simply avoid having any sort of aches and pains, then the easiest things are the things that we simply already know, which is be aware of your posture and mostly be aware of what you're doing for too long. The body doesn't like to sit or be still for more than 20 to 30 minutes. So if you find for 20 to 30 minutes you've been sitting down and maybe sitting in the same position, I would say stand up and walk around for five to 10 minutes. Maybe give yourself a couple of those shoulder blade pinches together. Start moving the joints around in a very slow, easy, pain-free range, and just change positions really often if you can. 
Well, one of the great things about physical therapy, and, and unfortunately I've had to use physical therapy a few times for some injuries, is they keep people away from the opioids. Uh, as everybody knows, the opioid crisis is uh, devastating to uh, every community throughout the United States. And uh, that's why I think uh, physical therapy is so important because you can get better, you can get healthier by using a physical therapist instead of always getting a prescription or, or some type of pain medication. What are your thoughts? This has been one of the main goals for our company for many, many years since we opened. As we started to see the local area, you know, suffering from opioids and uh, the effects of them, we decided one of our main goals was going to be, let's get ourselves into one of the healthiest states or areas to live in. Let's try to reduce opioid related dependency and death. So what we're seeing through the research right now is that by seeing physical therapy first, it can reduce the chances that you need to have any sort of surgery. It's going to improve your outcomes after an injury, and it can help you get away from needing those opioids with a really natural way to remedy and heal. The good thing is, and the important thing to look out for, is that we'll always be honest with a condition. We can tell you this is something that will definitely get better with our help, or we can recommend that you maybe see further evaluation if needed. So it's always a great first step if you want to avoid getting a prescription. Well, JP, I probably should have done this right up front, but tell us a little about you. Where are you from? Where would you go to school? All that good stuff. So I'm from the Burlington, Vermont area. I grew up up in a, a little bit more rural part of the state of Vermont. Um, went through a lot of injuries as a kid playing sports. I was one of the kids who thought I could never get hurt and maybe I could do anything. So a lot of injuries and needing a lot of physical therapy myself really drove me to uh, the profession. So I went to the University of Vermont. I studied my uh, undergrad in exercise physiology before getting my doctorate in physical therapy. During one of my rotations, I had the opportunity to intern as a student with elite physical therapy at a North Smithfield, Rhode Island location. And after going through a few other rotations at various locations throughout the country, I kind of had the opportunity to say that was a place that really seemed to fit in with my philosophy of PT. That's a place that I felt can do things the right way. And that's what brought me back. So I moved uh, from the DC area where I was doing my final rotation up to Rhode Island and had the opportunity to work with Elite ever since. Well, I've, I've had the opportunity to sit with your two owners and that seems to be one of the keys uh, that they expressed to me is the training um, that they do for all of their employees. And, you know, they seek out the best talent that they can. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the training that they do there at the uh, office? Well, a good thing that you're always looking for is to always want to improve your training process. So you're always trying to look for the most up-to-date research and the most and the latest in standard care and clinical practice guidelines. So the biggest thing that we have going in our training process, in my opinion, is that we offer a lot of continuing education. So on top of bringing in really high quality candidates and really top class physical therapists, we're also always looking to improve the physical therapists that we have. So bringing in seven or eight courses per year to help everybody increase their skills as a therapist and increase their knowledge every year to make sure we're always giving the best care for people, I think it's the most important thing that drives progress in a profession and for the health of people is making sure you're always staying up to date on the most current research and the most current treatment techniques. And that's what we're always trying to do. Well, that's awesome. And uh, JP, I really appreciate uh, you joining me today. Um, we want to do a big shout out to Dave Angel over there at Double ACS. He's the one who has uh, put these shows together for us, uh, along with the crew there at Double ACS, who does a great job. Um, so. That's all I have this afternoon, uh, folks. Um, one of the things that I'd like to encourage you to do is to keep up on our Facebook page as well as Elite Physical Therapies. Um, you know, they keep uh, their hours and hours of operation and their way to get a hold of them there. Ours right now, uh, we've just become an information resource for all of these different programs that are out there the PPP, uh, the Payment Protection Program, um, and all of the loans, grants, things like that. We encourage you to keep an eye on our Facebook page because that's the easiest place for us to update every day. Um, we also have another page, the United Regionals Rally Around the Restaurants. Uh, if you're looking for, you know, some takeout, something to eat, check out all the different restaurants that are up there. But uh, thanks for joining us. Uh, I appreciate AACS putting this together for us. And uh, 
everybody, please be safe, wash your hands, stay healthy.